Scientists say the Earth simmered to its sixth hottest year on record in 2021, making it one of the most catastrophic climate years in American history. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, in conjunction with NASA, released their annual assessment of global temperatures, which details the major climate trends of 2021. Officials say 20 natural disasters led to more than 600 fatalities and $145 billion in damages nationwide. Overseas, officials say nearly 2 billion people in 25 Asian, African, and Middle Eastern nations had their hottest years on record. This includes China, Nigeria, and Iran. They say the hot year is part of a long-term warming trend, and there is no indication it will slow down. For more on this, I want to bring in Russell Vose. He is the... He is the Analysis and Synthesis Branch Chief of NOAA's National Centers for Environmental Information. Uh, I think I got that right. It's quite a title. It's quite a title, and you nailed it. Thank you very much. Well, good afternoon to you. I appreciate you being here. Uh, talk to me about this NOAA climate assessment. What are the big reveals to you? So you, you already heard one point. We rank sixth warmest on record. Um, but maybe the point to take away more than that is the last seven years have been warmer than anything we've seen um, going back more than a century. They really stand out. Each of the past four decades has been warmer than the decade that preceded it. It's certainly warmer now than at any time in probably the last 2,000 years, maybe even longer. The long-term trend is basically up, and there's a lot of other indicators that tell us that too, like melting glaciers and rising sea levels. Yeah, you know, when you hear sixth hottest on record, you think, well, that's not, not too bad. You know, we're used to hearing records, uh, so this was not a record. However, the hottest years are all clustered in our lifetimes, which is what's so concerning here. Uh, you've heard scientists uh, internationally refer to this as a code red moment for the planet. From where you're sitting and looking at the data you have, uh, how would you characterize the crisis? Well, you know, the thing that really catches my attention are the extreme events, if you will. Um, we've certainly seen a lot of extremes over the past year. You mentioned 20 separate disasters that hit damages totaling at least a billion dollars in the United States alone. Um, and the reason we, I think, are seeing more of these is that, like, one of the key drivers is heat. Um, heat drives a lot of events. The most example, obvious example is heat waves, like the one in the Pacific Northwest in June. But warm air holds more moisture, which means heavier rainfall. Hot air is a key ingredient to wildfires, along with wind and spark and fuel, of course. Warm water fuels hurricanes. And um, as for this year, some of the events were probably not even possible without the impacts of global warming, or at least they were made uh, much worse by it. Mm. Russell, I want to throw to a piece of, uh, of interview sound with former Vice President Al Gore, familiar voice on issues of climate change, and then we'll talk about it on the other side. Uh, former Vice President Gore says that the crisis is getting worse, and it's getting worse more quickly than people are coming up with solutions to fix it. Take a listen. A realist will tell you, look, we've done some damage. Some of it, regrettably, is not recoverable. But we, we go from where we are. You want to avoid tipping people into despair <laughs> because some people go from denial to despair without pausing on the intermediate step of actually doing something about it. That is true. Uh, so, Russell, what more can leaders do to keep people paused on that intermediary step where they can actually do something about it? So that, that's a great question. And uh, actually, my role is a little different. My role and our organization's role is to keep score. Our job is to tell you what's been going on, how warm it's been, um, how that ranks relative to the past. And, uh, you know, we leave the policy making to the policy makers. Yeah. Well, then, Russell, let me rephrase the question, because I, I've been down to the NOAA headquarters uh, and, and I've covered uh, climate change for years. I was in Paris when the Paris Accords uh, or Paris Agreement was uh, was finalized. And I, I've noticed that the people who keep score, uh, yourself and others like you, uh, are suffering because there are other people out there who are kind of working the refs. They're saying, ah, that, that's not really the score or it's not as bad as you think. What's it like for you at this particular moment, looking at the data that you have, and I'm asking you as a human being, looking at the data you have and knowing that more could be done, but it's not being done? I hear what you're saying, and uh, it's, 
we try to separate our, you know, our personal opinions about what should be done from just giving the numbers to the American people, because we need to be viewed as unbiased messengers, if you will. Um, you know, if I was to say something like it's the sixth warmest year on record, and then we should do X, Y, and Z, then some might say, you know, maybe he has a vested interest in, in saying what the numbers are, and we won't be viewed as unbiased. So yeah. my job it's... is just the most accurate information possible to the American people. Yeah, and you do a great job of that. It's a very tricky uh, dynamic, because even though you don't say anything other than here are the numbers, there are people who will still politicize the numbers, and we're in quite a knotty position uh, as a people as a result. Uh, but those are bigger questions uh, for a political strategist. Maybe Al Gore has more to say about it, in fact. Uh, Russell Vose, uh, thank you very much for your work, uh, for your accuracy uh, and your diligence, and also your care there uh, in not getting out of your lane. Thank you. Thank you.